For this demo, we're working with our Lake House employees, and we're trying to understand how employee satisfaction differs by proximity to the office. We've got a point visualization here that uses our office location and the distance from employees to the office to understand how that affects the employee retention rate. We can filter through here to see the difference between our normal commute users with an employee retention rate of 0.9 and our long commute users. We can see that drops down to 0.89. So potentially, our employees with a longer commute are a bit less happy. We also have chloropleth maps that show average tenure by state, and you can see the regional variations at a glance. So how do we prepare our data to use it in these maps? Using the geospatial types, we can create a point location on a sphere by using the st point function. We pass in our longitude, latitude, and we set the SRID projection. In general, we'll be using 4326, which is what we use for GPS. We then create buffer zones around the office so we can intersect our employees and understand where they fall in relation to the office. Once we've got that together, we can come into editing our dashboard and see how we've done our calculations to create those colors for the point map. We're using the st within function to say, is this employee within the bounds of our close to office boundary or within our walk to office boundary? We translate that to a flag and use it to color our users. We also use distance sphere, which gives us the distance to the office measured in meters and that allows us to create other insights within our dashboard as well. Once we've got this data in the dashboard, we've got it all hooked up with common filters. We can slice it by region and drill into specific patterns. If we want to deep dive into the data further, we can use AIBI Genie. This is going to allow us to ask questions in natural language of the geospatial data, for example, we might say, what is the breakdown of employee tenure by distance to office? Using those measures that we generated earlier with the spatial SQL, it's going to be able to generate a query and then answer that question for us. We can see it's given us this average tenure. And actually, our longest tenured users are the ones furthest away from the office, which is a little bit surprising. In order to improve the functionality of this space, I've given it a hint on how to join the data using the spatial equals function to join the office geometry to the employee office location. And I've additionally given it this example SQL query, which can feed into this as well. Using all of these components, there are over 70 spatial functions that you might want to use that Databricks offers.